The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119. It has been called the psalm of the scriptures because it concentrates on one thing, the amazing sufficiency of God's word for our lives. Open to Psalm 119 today and open your heart to the Lord as we join Scott Pauley in this study. It is our prayer that through God's truth, you will find all you need. These are days of great need all around the world, and I think right now especially it behooves God's people to go back and remind themselves and rehearse in their own heart and then repeat to others the great sufficiency that we have in God. We have studied in a different study about the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is enough. And now we're studying through Psalm 119, and guess what the great message of Psalm 119 is? God's Word is enough. Uh, The great sufficiency of Scripture. Uh, We have in our study come now to the section that begins with verse 57 and continues through verse 64. And uh, I really believe this entire section, if I had to just boil it all down and say Psalm 119, 57 to 64 is about this, I would say it is all about the sufficiency of God's Word and God's way. Let me show you why. Notice how it begins and how it ends. Verse number 57 says, Thou art my portion, O Lord. That's a pretty good way to start, isn't it? Maybe you feel like your your account or your cupboard uh, or your wallet or your physical strength is ebbing low right now. I want to remind you that your supply is all sufficient if it is the Lord. Thou art my portion. Not what I can produce. Not what somebody else can give to me. Not what circumstances happen to send my way. No, no. It comes from God's gracious hand to our lives. Thou art my portion, O Lord. And then the end of the section, verse 64, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Do you see how the section starts and ends? It begins with the Lord as our portion, and it ends with the fullness of the Lord. Perhaps you feel very empty today. Perhaps you are getting better acquainted with your own needs. They're not uh, more at some times than others. We're always needy people. But there are times we feel our need more than others. There are times we're more aware of our need. And maybe you're living there today. I'm glad to remind you that there is a God who is your portion that is the God of all fullness, and there's nothing you need that is beyond his supply. Nothing's going to drain his account. Nothing is going to be too big for him. The Lord is more than enough. So what I'd like for us to do, I'd like for us to walk through this particular section and just make a a divine sufficiency list. Sometimes we make a grocery list or a to-do list. Well, this is a list of things to remind yourself of, things to repeat to yourself, and then, yes, things to share with other people about the sufficiency of our great God. Let's begin in verse 57. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. So first of all, we have our portion. We believe in the divine sufficiency, and that divine sufficiency is our portion or our provision. And could I just point something out to you? That the the portion is connected to the word of God. Listen to the end of the verse. I have said that I would keep thy words. You see, as you get into the Word of God, you discover more and more about the divine sufficiency. I think right now, if ever there was a time for us to give more attention to Scripture uh, than at any point in our lives, it is this moment. Uh, Never before have we needed a greater glimpse of the greatness of our God than when we are dealing with so many difficult things. And so, get into the Word. Keep the Word near to your heart and near to your mind, and in it you'll find your portion. Then, in verse number 58, we have not only my portion, we have my prayer. He says in verse 58, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. What a great prayer. What a prayer we all can take for ourselves today. Pray the very words of Scripture. There's a wonderful progression here. In verse 1, he's meditating on the word of God. And in verse 2, Uh, this section, he is responding to it in prayer. This is the back and forth of communion with God. The Lord speaks to us. What do we do? We cry out to God. 
Uh, there are some repeated things that we've studied already. For example, he says, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. You remember our episode on the wholehearted Christian. I would remind you, uh, this is not a time for half-heartedness, dear believer. This is a time to be out and out for the Lord, all in and all out for Christ. And so, with your whole heart, pray, seek the Lord's favor. Notice what he prays for, mercy. Be merciful unto me, according to thy word. He's laying hold on the promises of God. He's going to the greatest need. What is the great need every man has? We need mercy. Uh, If you don't know Jesus, you need mercy. If you do need Jesus, you need mercy. If you're young, if you're old, uh, if you're having a good day or you're having a challenging day, Everybody needs one thing. We need the fresh mercies of the Lord. Aren't you glad his mercy endureth forever? So in verse 57, the first verse of this section, we have my portion. In verse 58, we have my prayer. And then in verse 59, we have my path. He said, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So now we have obedience. What a beautiful step-by-step picture of the Christian experience. We begin in the Word of God. We talk to God in prayer. And then we obey what God tells us to do. If you want to live in the divine sufficiency, friend, here's the way to do it. Live in the Word. Live in the presence of God. And live in obedience. Are you on God's path for you today? Are you trying to make your own path? Are you trying to follow somebody else's path? Or are you on the path that God has for your life? He says, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. Notice, first you think, then you turn. In a recent study, we talked about how we turn our eyes and our heart and our life toward the Lord. Well, part of the reason people aren't turning to God today is they're not thinking. Stop. Think for a moment. Think about who you are and where you are and what you need. Think about your great need and God's great sufficiency, and it will help you to turn your feet to his testimonies, to get on the Lord's path for your life. Do you remember the prodigal in the far country? The Bible says he came to himself. I'm praying that for some people today. Dear Lord, bring that man to himself. Dear Lord, awaken that family. Uh, Dear Lord, help that young person to come to the end of himself uh, so that he can return to you. That may be a prayer you could pray for others that you're burdened over and concerned over. But we should pray it for ourselves. Lord, help me to think. Uh, spiritually, not just logically, spiritually. Help me to get out of the insanity of sin. So as I think on my own ways, I'll turn my feet to your testimonies. He gives the contrast to that in the next verse. He says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. You see, he turns to the path, he gets on the path, and then he starts moving forward on the path. And, And he does it quickly. He says, I made haste. Remember, delay is disobedience. Oh, there's a tremendous danger to delay. If God has told you to do something, friend, don't put it off a single day. Do it today. What is it the Holy Spirit's prompting you to do right now? If you want to see the divine sufficiency, just obey God. And the beautiful truth is, as you obey the Lord, you meet the Lord along the way. As you do what he says to do, you, dear believer, will meet Christ and all of his sufficiency at every twist and turn. Yes, this is all about the divine sufficiency. We'll come back to this section in our next study and finish our list. Uh, Why don't you take it today and read it for yourself. It's Psalm 119, verses 57 to 64. And just rejoice again in the divine sufficiency. All you need is found in the Word of God. As you learn it and apply it, you will come to know the God of the Word more and more. Our prayer today is that you will grow in your understanding of Scripture and your love for the one who gave it. You may find additional resources for Bible study at our online home. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org today. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your prayers, support, and thanks for sharing the Enjoying the Journey studies with others. (music) 